with Backstage 360 interviewing Sonny Landreth who just performed here mm -hmm. at the Ramona Main Stage. And man, that was an incredible show. How I want to first ask you, how long have you actually been playing guitar? Oh man, I don't have a calculator with me to think <laughs> about that. I, uh, well, you know, I started, uh, I got my first guitar when I was 13. Okay. Know? I'm 65, so there's a bit of math there. There's a bit but of a, math. A bit of math. And then, um, Right away, sort of putting bands together with my buddies, you know. When, when then, did the when did the the Slidico or the Slide? Slide came, it came come? later, but not, probably I think I was 16. I was discovering it and trying to figure it out. And um, I'd read about it in books and had albums and old blues cats and and I said no idea what I was doing. I mean, it was <laughs> a torture for the family, the pets, everyone. It was pretty brutal. Well, over 50 <laughs> years later, just watching you <laughs> well, now, you you truly are the king of Slidico as yeah. you've been labeled. When was the first time that you would say you heard that term with your guitar, with your style? Well, that's actually a, a, a term a buddy of mine coined. He's a journalist and a writer. And, a, and I think it was one of the first interviews I did with um, one of the trades, you know, the guitar mags, and and they they heard him say that he was in the room, and then they picked up on. Next thing I opened the magazine to read the interview. Went, Whoa, okay, all right. So, and so you've been associated. Yeah, that was like 19. Good lord, it was like 1992, you know, something like that. Wow. So it's been a while. Now the slide code, because you, you have um, the way you play and watching you, it's like it's literally like watching you make love to that instrument. It's amazing because you use. It's like you're ambidextrous. You use every finger, every joint on that guitar. Now, is that uh, like kind of what you would call slidico, or is that your own technique? Added well, to that? really, slidico is just something that, like I say, my friend came up with. Right. I, I wouldn't really hold a whole lot to it other than <laughs> me, you know. But, but, um, but it's you know I think it says a lot more about slide guitar per se, um, the potential there to really. Um, push boundaries and create new sounds, new techniques, and um, um, I'm, I'm really, you know, proud of the fact that I've had all these opportunities to work with such great artists in <clears throat> different genres, you know, and so slide guitar can fit into anything, I'm convinced. I mean, you have and, and, worked with and a lot of different musicians, so <clears throat> when, when, I, when, I, when I started looking into, the, into everything that you've done, you worked with all different styles of musicians. You've worked with Jimmy Buffett, Eric Clapton. Who have you not worked with, alive or dead, that you would have wanted to work with or still to this day? Well, with? not with us, not of this earth. Um, uh, be Satch, Satchmo, you know, Louis Armstrong, I'd have to say. Oh, you know? wow, yeah. I'd love to have tried a shot at that, but... Uh, and I started out playing trumpet, so he's a oh, huge really? hero. Yeah, yeah, I played trumpet through college, actually, and um, it was my academic instrument. Um, but uh, and uh, living, I'm uh, still wanted um, to work with Jeff Beck. Uh, we came kind of close. Uh, we've done shows together, you okay. know. So maybe one of these days we'll see. He's actually playing up uh, a couple a uh, couple miles from here in just a couple weeks, or actually, I think. Next Let's call week. him up. Yeah, maybe maybe we should maybe we should work on that and get something going. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, with yeah. Buddy guys yeah, Buddy's no show. friend. We've done a lot of shows together, yeah. Well yeah, they're good friends. I have to say, uh, I've seen a few guitarists live myself, but you're definitely one of the best I've seen. And even Eric Clapton said that you are one of the most underrated guitarists ever. How did you hear that when he said that? And how did that make you feel? Well, I'm, I'm Deeply honored. I mean, uh, Eric, we become friends, you know, and uh, I love him to death, and he's a sweetheart. And he, he was a huge influence on me as a kid, and uh, um, he was one of the, you know, original and ultimate guitar heroes in the way that it's thought of today. I mean, they, they just set the bar and just amazing. But, um, you know, I, I, I 
I appreciate it. It all came about through an interview with um, a journalist at the Boston Globe, okay. and he and I become great friends. Um, but way back when we did this story, uh, I was playing at the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival, and um, I believe it was Levy Town was coming up, losing track of the time. But but anyway, he um, no, you know, actually it was right uh, from uh, from the Reach because uh, he played on that album. But he got in touch with Eric uh, for a quote. Okay. You know, it's not like and uh, then Eric would do that. You know, just for any you know body. Yeah, well, yeah. let me quote you. You know, it's like so. It was really sweet, and uh, and so it was part of a piece uh, in the Boston Globe, which was huge. I mean. It was, and that, that's how that all kind of happened. And Would so. you chalk that up with like one of your best accomplishments of your 50 plus year career as a guitarist? Well, getting to, working with him and getting to know him, yes, absolutely. In fact, when he, I played all of his festivals, you know, mm -hmm. all the crossroads. Yeah. And, uh, it, but it wasn't until the, the second one when uh, he actually uh, sat in with us. And it was really cool because you know, we go to the business, and you know, you prepare, and blah blah blah. I'm kidding. We do a sound check, blah blah. And then you're playing the gig, and next thing you know, Eric Clapton's on stage, and then he's playing a solo on the song he wrote. That's gotta I mean, be so. It's kind of like that's when it became uh, like a you know reality check for me. I mean, that's kind of <laughs> like, wow, this is really happening, you know. That, that I mean, just <laughs> that that's kind of that kind of checks you uh, emotionally because here you are, you're you're doing your oh, yeah. thing, and you've been oh, yeah. playing for a while. Yeah, sure. Eric Clapton's on yeah. stage with you, and it's like yeah. just buddies playing guitar. Yeah. And it's I could have never, uh, could have only dreamed of that, you know, when I was a kid and all. So that's <laughs> a big one. Oh, that's definitely incredible being able to work with musicians like that. And speaking of musicians that you've worked with, the current lineup you have, how long uh, for the your backing band, uh, your drummer and your bassist? How long have you been playing with those two guys? Well, uh, our drummer, he's been with us. Uh, he was with us off and on. We have a stable of drummers back home that we've worked with for many years. But now he's been with us. Phew, now we've gone on five, six years, you know, six, he's seven years. Absolutely he's amazing. Incredible. Yeah. He's an yeah. incredible percussionist. Yeah, that's Brian Brignac from Gonzales, Louisiana. And uh, he plays with everybody. He's, everybody loves him. He, you know, the great cats like that that not only have the chops, not only have the know-how, but they have a great, you know, vibe and great attitude, and uh, you really want to work with the bass player, Dave Ranson, and I. Uh, I met him. He was in a band. Uh, we were going to, let's see, for me, I was going to the uh, eighth grade. So it was the summer, right before my eighth grade year. That's when we met. Whoa, okay. And uh, so, and then we started playing together after high school, and then, um, we put bands together off and on for years, and we finally said, okay, we're going to do it. Yeah. This would have been about, uh, there were a few attempts through the 70s, recordings, all kinds of stuff like that. But the band, we put a band together, uh, it became Bayou Rhythm, and that would have been uh, right before the summer of 80 and 81. And we started going out to Colorado and playing. <clears throat> and um, Is that when you were for your first CD? Well, actually, you know what? Was... I had already... I already made my first album uh, in the 70s, and it was stuck in a vault. Then I made, uh, when we got together, Dave and I f first started, you know, really going, getting serious about taking it on the road and all that. Then the first album we made together was called Blues Attack. Okay. That would have been, um, we recorded it in 1980 and put it out in 81. And when I say put it out, I mean literally, I put it out. <laughs> I mean, I had them in my car driving store to store. Back in the day, we still had record stores yes. and radio stations that would do all that and bring them, you know. Um, so, yeah, so we go way back. And That's he's incredible. Awesome. He's a bass player's bassist. And um, he's just amazing. He's unique. He's very like technical. That. Yeah. Well, it's very uh, soulful, too. He, it's kind of like um, uh, Duck Dunn, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, Phil Lesh. And he's really, the cats know how to just put the right thing there and then come up with parts that just are you know, like classic, you know. So, yeah, I'm very fortunate. You, know, well, you definitely hand. have a lot of great musicians. Yeah. And it's probably one of the reasons why you've won, won uh, what was it, the Blues Music Award in the Instrumentalist Guitar category this year. Yeah, Tell yeah, me a cool. little bit about that. That has to be an amazing award for you to win. Well, it is because there's so many players, man. I mean, in all the you know, categories they have. And they have the awards in Memphis every year. 
Um, unfortunately, I couldn't make it this year. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, it represents uh, all of the blues foundations in the country. And um, it's sort of their big uh, event they have every year, the culmination of everything they do all during the year. And people don't realize they're involved with the schools, they have all these programs and c community outreach you know, kind of things. It's really, really, really cool. So, yeah, it's a big honor. You well, know. It's good to be involved in that for sure. Well, oh, yeah. it, it's sad that this is your only, well, actually, you're going to be performing tomorrow as well, right. but that this is your only Southern, Cali perform Southern California performance. But when will we, uh, when do we expect to see you back? Oh, man, I love it. I love it here. We we, uh, we played in the area for many, many years. We used to play at the Anthology and other, the Pier and um, belly up. I mean, we go way <laughs> back in the day, and uh, I love it here. Love this area. It's, it's wonderful around here. I love it. So we'll we'll be back. Um, hopefully, you know, we kind of get on a a circuit, and and the scheduling is such so that it works everybody within the course of a year, six months to a year. You know. Perfect. Well, you've got one more California <laughs> date, and then right. you're back to Louisiana. Right. So and uh, so, how do you? Um, you're from Louisiana, born right. and raised, and you born in Mississippi, raised in, in that's right, Canton, Mississippi. Canton, Mississippi. Yeah. I stuck with Canton because uh, I'm I'm a Georgia boy myself, and Canton, yeah. Georgia. Yeah, right. Is, yeah, uh, it's kind of where I lived. I went yeah. to high school in Canton oh, cool. area. So so I got that southern southern cool. thing going on. Yeah. And you're definitely a, a southern gentleman. So I, I I love the Louisiana back roots. Uh, that gives you the 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 um, what's the word I'm looking for? It kind of gives you your. Uh, well, I tell you, for me, it's it's what I drew, you know, all my inspiration from originally, and I I thank my dad many times for moving us to Louisiana, <laughs> and because it, the music's such a big part of the culture, yeah, you know, music, food, dance, and it's all it's a way of life, and Cajun and Creole, I mean, so it's a big deal, and having that uh, as a backdrop to to grow up in that environment is just. Uh, Crisis then for me. Do you have your biggest regret as a musician from when you really started hitting the road? You really started touring. What would what would you say is your biggest regret on the road? You know, I, I really don't have any. I really? really don't. If if I did have say something I would do different, uh, but I don't really regret it. But something I would do different is earlier on <clears throat> I would have probably taken some of those gigs would have paid me more money <laughs> you know but I was really stubborn I mean I was like I want to play my music as all this and that's cool and, and a, f there's a case to be made for you know you have this path and you make these choices <clears throat> and it would have turned out differently if I had done that but on the other hand there was there was a little stretch of time it would have made it a little easier taking some of the pressure off you know of course um but i, I really don't reg i can't say that i regret it i say you your know? style doesn't doesn't really. lend itself to, to to doing anything different other than you and well you are you on the guitar but that it took a lot of years to get to where i'm now you okay. know and see back then i mean i'm constantly learning watching other people and we all we had a really wonderful community of musicians that, that as we grew up together then we all kind of went out in the world it started some of us out in the different you know the regional regionally you might say mm -hmm. and uh, some of those bands broke out like um, you know Bobby Kimball went on to Toto and all the big hits and he was a singer for Toto and um, uh, Louisiana LaRue, you know, Jeff Pollard, they have all the big hits and okay. they're awesome you know, musicians. And they all, these, I went to high school with them, we graduated from high school together. Oh, so, wow. you know, it's pretty cool to see stuff like that, you know. We, we talked about a little bit back with Jimmy Buffett. So when did you mm -hmm. first meet Jimmy Buffett and run into him? I first met him <clears throat> would have been um, at Jazz Fest with John Hyatt. So that would have been okay. probably... Um, uh, so it wouldn't have been that first run in 87, 88, probably by 90, 89, 90. And you're regular with John Hayes and his band? <clears throat> no, not anymore, John, no. I haven't done it in a long time. But, okay. um, but we did a lot of road work together, made albums, a lot, a lot of shows. Um, but then later, um, I guess about seven years ago, seven, eight years ago, uh, Quint Davis, uh, who runs and is the... Um, the one who um, had um, New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. Okay. You know, so he he brought me on, uh, brought Jimmy on stage for our set. Huh. So then Jimmy 
you know, invited me to play on his album and did a song of mine. And the next thing you know, we started working together. So it's pretty cool. I That's love awesome. it. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, thank you so much for taking the time after your show. I know it's late and it's it really means a lot to us and to our fans and the Backstage 360 for you to take the time out to sit down with us. So thank you cool, again, man. Sonny. Appreciate it. Sonny Landreth has been right, such man. a pleasure. Sonny Landreth here at the Ramona <laughs> Main Stage at Backstage with Backstage 360. I'm Big John and thank you for listening. Thank you.